Okay, in today's video I'm going to show you how to export a CIV file from GSAS2. So to start, I'm going to start by bringing in a phase. So I'm just going to grab it from a CIV file. That's the crystallographic information file. It's the easiest way to store um, information about crystal structure. So I'm going to bring one of these in and it has to read it. It checks that the formula or the name of it's fine. And this is cesium lead bromine 3. So this is the lead halide perovskite that's used in lots of solar cells. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is you would also import things like powder data and the instrument parameter file. And you would then refine uh, this unit cell until it matched the actual data. right? And maybe your lattice parameter would change. For example, maybe it would go from 5.874 to just 5.81. right? Um, anyways, you would finish your refinement, and when you're satisfied with your refinement and you're ready to export it, it's really simple. You're going to go up here to your export tab, and you can either you know, you can export the entire thing, the phases, powder data, and so forth. What we want is a phase, right? It's this phase of matter that now has a modified, say, lattice parameter or atomic positions or anything else. And the easiest way to do it is with a quick sieve. So we're going to click this. Uh, it's going to ask for space to save it. Let's just call it the test file, test.sieve. I'm going to put it on my desktop, that's fine. Sure enough, you just saw it appear there. It also is asking, hey, you know, you haven't saved your project file. Fine, we can name that test as well, .gpx. And there's our uh, gsas2 file, and here is our uh, civ file. Now, you'll notice that this civ file, it looks like the icon for Vesta. That's because I already have Vesta installed on my computer. If you haven't used that, watch for my YouTube uh, tutorial on that. I'll put in the description. It is the best, easiest way to visualize crystal structures, in my opinion. So up comes our structure, and right away you see that it already has bonds attached to it. Vesta implemented a software code that tries to find anion and cations and create bonds. If it got it wrong, or if you want to look at a different bond length, that's easy to do. You're going to come up here and you're going to go to Edit Bonds, or just by typing Control B. Control B will pull this up, and you see that it already knew to bond lead with bromine, right? And it searches between zero angstroms all the way up to 3.62. So it uses some algorithm to figure that out. Um, if that doesn't show any bonds and you think that those should be bonded, this value for your maximum bond length is probably too short and you can try extending it, right? You could take it up to four maybe or five and that's typically high enough. If you go too high, like seven angstroms, it's gonna actually look for second nearest neighbors and that's gonna be a problem. See how it like, it's found way too many bonds because it's looking beyond the one that we needed. So we need to change that back. So instead of seven, let's move that back down to something like four, which is a reasonable number. Okay, so we know that the bond is somewhere between zero and four angstroms. How do we know the exact length? Well, if you double click on it, it shows you. When I double clicked on this bar between those, it shows the lead bromine bond 2.905 angstroms. So that's really just one of the best, easiest ways to figure out a bond distance is by doing the refinement in GCS2, and then when you want to learn about the crystal structure, export it as a sieve file, open it up in Vesta, find the bonds, and it's really easy to do the work from there. So that's this video for today. Hope it was helpful.